what the heck is the difference between the COO or a VP of ops or a general manager or a director of ops? Well, I'm going to tell you in this video, and it's really been bothering me over the last few years to see the number of companies that really screw this up and they end up having to overpay people or having no incentives for their people or really confusing the organization. Over the last 20 years, there's been a lot of title inflation in our companies. What I mean by that is that smaller companies are giving away big titles thinking that titles don't really matter. Well, I got news for you, they really do matter. So let's say that you have a finance department for a second, right? You could call them a CFO, but maybe they're only a controller or a director of finance or a VP of finance. The bigger the title that you give the person, the more responsibility that they think they have, the more direct reports they want to try to bring into the organization, the less they want to roll up their sleeves and get dirty and the more strategic they're trying to be. And often they think they should be paid a lot more as well. So remember, if you've got like a controller and you're giving them a CFO title, well, when they go out and look on Indeed or Glassdoor or any of the industry job sites to look at what their compensation can be, they're checking to see what other CFOs should be paid as well. On the operation side, it's exactly the same thing. The director of operations or a general manager or a VP of operations or a COO are pretty much all the second in command to the entrepreneur or the CEO, but don't give out the big title too soon. You know, when I was the COO for 1-800-GOT-JUNK, if I lean back 16 years ago when I left the organization, almost 17 years ago now, I was being paid over $300,000 a year. That was a good income back 17 years ago. Well, fast forward today, that's probably in about a million dollars a year range. That's a true COO title at a very senior level. If I was more of a director of operations, I would have been being paid maybe $120,000. So here's how you decide what the title should be and also then what the compensation should be for the role. Take a look at the basket of priorities or objectives that you've given this person to actually get done. What are the core roles and responsibilities that they have over the next 12 months? And then based on those roles and responsibilities, go out and look to see what the market would be paying for a similar sized company to do similar things. And that will show you the core compensation you probably need to pay. And then also the associated title that you wanna be putting in place for that person as well. Because the reality is if you start overpaying, if you start giving out these big titles, people think they have different roles than they really do. They actually start to build out their fiefdoms more than they really need to. And they really don't have a title to chase. So I try to recommend keep them down at the VP level if you're hiring a senior person for one or two years and allow them to chase that title of the COO. And also by the time that they get there, they really don't need any management oversight by you because they've really become that true yin and yang. So hopefully that helps you demystify what the role of the COO or VP Ops or Director of Ops can be. And if you are a CEO or a COO right now, head on over and check out watchcameron.com. There's a lot of great free resources for you over there. And um, I would even maybe watch this video another time and make sure that you're not overtitling some people in your organization as well. But go check out the next video here as well.